Hey everybody, welcome to a special block party of Area 312. We have a lot of friends. We're gonna introduce everybody here in just a little bit. Today, we're gonna to be discussing Striper, the final battle, the new album. And it's great to have all of our friends here. Um, I do hear the doorbell ringing one more time, friends. So I need to, need to let one other person in uh, and then we'll get the introductions underway. <laughs> hey, Mr. Perry. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Let's let, uh, let's let, um, we're going to let Joel Walker in and then I'm going to let Joel in and, and Perry, if you can just say something like, uh, well, guys, it's been great to visit and I'll see y'all later whenever Joel gets on. All right. <laughs> hey. Hey, Joel. Hey, Joel. Well, it was a good talk, guys. I appreciate you having me and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Okay. Thank you, Perry. Good care, Perry. Right. Perry. Thank you, buddy. Good care, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> that look was priceless. Uh, I was like, what did I just miss? <laughs> I'm obviously not a Striper fan, Perry. Mr. Perry Richardson, thank you, sir, for blessing us. Thank you, guys, all of our friends, for blessing us. And we'll do some introductions here after a bit. But, friends, Mr. Perry, I spoke with Miss Shelley. I told her we were having this, uh, this little block party. And uh, she said, Perry could. Mr. Perry, I guess Miss Shelley, you know, she does your managing and everything. And she said he well, gets married. to do what she says, basically, is what it is. That's right. <laughs> so get on her good side and you're all good. That's right. Well, Miss <laughs> Shelley might, you know, she might think I'm okay. But I, I asked if it would be okay, guys, if we asked Mr. Perry about maybe three questions. Um, he had a few, just a few minutes. And so um, if anybody regarding the final battle, if you all had something in your notes or something and you'd like to ask Mr. Perry uh, a question, we can probably field about three questions and then I need to let Mr. Perry go on his way. Yeah, just don't make it about uh, my workout regimen, how I got so ripped for the album cover. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you guys killed it. <laughs> There he is right there in all of his glory. I mean, the front cover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, so I'm guessing, yeah, this is, I wish I had the album. I'm guessing that's you, Mr. Perry, right back, right there. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think that is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty funny. But go ahead, guys. Yeah, whatever you want to. I, I, I got one off the top of my head, if that's okay. Um. Yeah. I'm Dave Cruz from the Covenant Metal Show, and uh, the question I have is, uh, did you have to audition for Striper, or did they know that they wanted you? No, I auditioned for them. Uh, uh, they sent me, a, our, their man, one of their managers, or co-manager, uh, Dave, he, he knew me from uh, way back in the first firehouse days i think he had a band back then that opened for us at one of our first shows we ever played in raleigh and uh so he knew me and uh, he thought i'd be a good fit so he kind of pushed for me to get an audition with the guys so i learned like four songs and flew up and we sat in michael's little studio and uh played through the songs a couple of times without singing anything and i was like i didn't know the songs that well i was like man i really need a vocal here to know where i'm at in the song right so i was a little nervous and then they were through play and i said okay well let's let's just sing some together acapella i was like oh god okay <laughs> so, that's what happened it, was, it went you know four songs and i, I was there maybe in, i don't remember an hour or two maybe and uh they said, cool, we'll let you know. We'll give you a call in a, you know, in a few days. We've got a few other people we want to check out. And uh, they call me the next day. It's like, we don't want to check nobody else out. <laughs> if you want it, you got it. So nice. it's uh, uh, right on. Very happy. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Hey, I got a question, if you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, with Striper obviously being uh, not a Christian band, as they say, but, you know, Christian's in a band. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of, where's your stance? Where's your faith uh, stand as being a band that boldly sings about Christ and, and things of that nature? Hey, I have no problem with that. I sang in a, I, my first ever musical, where this musical journey started for me, 
when I was like seven or eight years old, uh, I sang in a gospel quartet. Okay. And uh, my family's always been, you know, we were pretty religious family. Um, but uh, I was raised that way, and it's always been in my heart. Uh, you know, I'm not one to push it on people, and I don't talk a lot about it, really. Um, but uh, I am proud to be in this band that delivers that message. So, you know. That's awesome. If I sure, hope you're doing good, uh, you, Shelly, and the pups. Uh, tell them hello yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a little weird lately, but uh, I think she heard her back, but uh, everything's cool. Yeah. Well, I hope she gets to feeling better. I did have a music question for you. I had in my notes, I really liked the bass riff on See No Evil, Hear No Evil, but was there a standout for you on this particular album in terms of just not overall favorite? song but your contribution be it bass or harmonies mm, boy um there's a part on heart and soul i love it was the near the end of that one to kind of go off on the end of that song i think that one kind of stands out one of my favorites thank you oh uh, cool good thank you Yeah, I love that song. And Perry, I don't have a question, but I, I just wanted to say something. As a lifelong Striper fan, um, nothing against the old guy, but I am just really appreciate what you brought to the band. It's just been incredible. Oh, and man. Just, it, your light just shines. Every time you see, you're, you're, you always got a huge smile. <laughs> and I, the bass has just honestly, in the last few albums, just it's just never sounded better. It's just... I, I was always one and never kind of really paid any attention to bass. Like I knew it was there. Mm -hmm. I never really paid attention to it. And yeah. all of a sudden, these last two albums that you've recorded on, you just hear it. It's like, it, it's, it's amazing. It is, it's pretty. And you're, it's and you're also just super common. kind with your friends. I don't know. You, you probably see so many people, but uh, I remember I saw you guys on the, yeah, to hell with it, or uh, goddamn evil tour. Yeah. Uh, I rolled up to the back of the of the place you were playing, and uh, you were just sitting on your chair having us having a cigar. And I could tell you were on your phone. I wasn't going to bother you. And then you came over and said hi, and and you were just so kind. And uh, just wanted to uh, say thanks. Hey, th th thank you. Uh, um, that's. I mean, I'm. I, I know I do smile a lot. But I'm pretty happy when I'm on stage. Um, I'm seriously having a pretty good time. And uh, I think it kind of shows. Um, but I try to be that kind of person. I try to be positive. And, uh, try to be uh, optimistic about things and look on the bright side of stuff and, and have a good outlook. There's the way mom and dad raised me. But uh, I understand some people look up to the band and, and it's... And I know if I was going walking up to, say, I don't know, Judas Priest, and if they were jerks to me, it would kill me inside. So I'd like to know that somebody's a fan of the band that I want to, you know, I want to make them feel good too. So that's the way that is. Perry, I don't, I don't have a question per se, but I'm a, I'm a fellow South Carolina guy, and I just, I, where are you from? I'm in Columbia. All right. I, I, I just thought that was awesome that a, a South Carolina guy was going to be with my, with yeah. my favorite bands. And awesome, man. Yeah, I love I'm glad I got to move back home. And uh, You're still in Conway, is that right? I am up in the uh, north end of North Myrtle, up in the Little okay. River area now. And uh, uh, when we moved back, we built a house here on the golf course, a nice, quiet little neighborhood. And, I get to play golf once a week with all of the neighborhood guys, and it's pretty cool. And uh, so, yeah, it's out of the way, out of town, away from everything, and uh, I'm just having the ball being back home, yeah. Right. Yeah. Harry, what's it like playing with Robert Sweet? <laughs> <laughs> I 
And visual timekeeper. Wow. It can be a challenge. <laughs> I am used to Michael Foster at our house. Rock solid, just, you know, just power drummer, right? Robert is that, but he is, he does fills and things that I was never used to playing to, right? I mean, things will be, it almost, you know, it's so, it's so crazy. you got to mentally count yourself, one, two, three, four. And that's his style, dude. And it was so hard when I first joined to, to learn him and to, uh, and because it's different on the playing to a record and when you get in there and they're live and playing it live, it's totally different. So the first um, few months was a, a learning experience for me and we lock in together, especially on that kick, man. I mean, I get the most compliments that, that we get is, you know, our, Vocal, your vocals sound great, which I love because I'm a vocal guy before I'm a bass player. Um, and you're so tight. The band is as tight as I've ever heard it. And that's me and Robert locking in. That kick and bass has got to be right on the money, right? And uh, so I think we have evolved over these, you know, what's it been five years now already? I had an anniversary wow. yet. Yeah. So, so and yeah, you know, it, it. I think we're pretty close to being very good together. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I keep hoping you guys will hang, swing through here in Northern California. I know you just played in SoCal. Yeah. That's about four. That's about four hundred miles from where I'm at here in NorCal. Yeah. And uh, look. I hope for so. I love it up there, man. I hope we get to go back up that area, you know? Yeah. Looking forward to it sometime. Yeah. I Perry, have a quick I, question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. No, okay. Go ahead, Rex. Okay. Perry, with Oz and Michael's medical um, issues that they had, was it probably more difficult recording this album then or not? It was for them. Yes, absolutely. It was very challenging. Uh, Michael had a hard time seeing, you know, he's a, uh, especially live playing live it was really hard for him because he couldn't tell his depth perception was off he couldn't tell where his hand was on the neck when he'd go up for a lead you know and things like that so it you know it it, it took a you know it it might have taken a few more takes on this record but okay. um man they come up with some great stuff. It, I mean, it didn't affect his writing and his singing and his, and you know, he finally he got this parts down. This is some of the best lead work I've heard those boys do together, I think, ever. So I'm, this, I don't know how it keeps getting better and better, but I kind of think it does. You know? So, hey, can hey, you ask Perry, any sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Lee. Go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. How you doing, Perry? Good. From the UK here. Yeah? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Never um, mind. I love your videos, dude. Oh, thanks. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. Um, listen, never mind where you're going to go to America. When are you coming over here? That's what I want to know. <laughs> we're, uh, we were talking about that the other day. We need to get a, a European tour going. I, and because um, I think Australia might be coming through. So we've got to get back over there, dude. It's been. You know, I, I think when I first joined, we went to Spain and did a festival there and did something in Italy for Frontiers, but we hadn't really toured. Yeah. Then. So we need to do an extensive tour of, of Europe. But listen, not that, I, not that I hold anyone to anything, but Michael promised to take me out to America two years ago. <laughs> so uh, he hasn't yeah. done it yet. So yeah. you're, you've got, you're going to have to do it now. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome to come on down to Myrtle Beach. I got a an extra room, or I got a camper in the in, in the driveway. You can. Oh stay. man, that's fine with me. I'm 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 staying in a tent. I'm going to download and staying in a tent next year, so a camper will be fine. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, last time I really toured Europe back in Firehouse, we went over in '91. 
with, with tourists with a status quo, or status quo, as you might say. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they're, they're big over here. They're an they institution, were, really. My dog's going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they had like three tractor trailers just for their chefs and their ovens and all that stuff. <laughs> it was gigantic, the biggest tour I'd ever seen. In the first show, we had sold out three nights in Wembley. You know, yeah, they're big. They were a big. They were a big thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Every show was sold out for. A, we were with them for for a month, and <laughs> they treated us great, and we loved those guys. So it was fun. Yeah. yeah. Might not have been our crowd, but it was great to get over there and get at least get our name out there. Cool. Well, I'll definitely if you come over, man, I'll be there. I'll see uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I want to meet you, dude. I really, I really do love your enthusiasm about the songs and the band and and the stuff you put out on YouTube is awesome. I can't wait to see each song, what you do with it, and uh, <laughs> your reaction. So I love it, dude. Yeah. Thanks, man. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Perry, I'm looking at the time. Um, I would like to ask one quick question on my behalf. And first of all, and guys, let's let's congratulate Mr. Perry on five years with Striker. That's awesome. Yes. Thank oh, you, yeah, sir. absolutely. And thank you and Miss Shelley for being a blessing. And Mr. Perry, my question is, I know that on Even the Devil Believes, uh, you had contributions, at least the title given, ah. stir on thought with Make Love Great Again, you know, and um, do unto others. Yeah. My question is, and I, I searched the liner notes and I might have just overlooked something, but did you have any, whether song title contributions or music contributions? Yeah. Were there so, any titles? That I, you I come up with uh, Transgressor. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, um, I had some, there was some other thing. I, I forget what song it was. I kind of was in. It was a, which one was it? The Way, the Truth, and the Life. I had a, some kind of version of that, but it was close. But sure. yeah, that's really all I do. I, I was sitting around trying to think of stuff. And, yeah. You know, it's hard coming up with <laughs> titles that might work with a certain album. So by, the, by the time you've written one song, Michael's probably done 50. 55 songs, so you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't get it, right? It's unbelievable. <laughs> you had your hand on Transvestor. I mean, ways, you know, hell of a way to start off an album, that's all I can say. <laughs> that is a pretty... Now that, that, that blows your socks off right off the bat, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. one of the best... That's straight up from the end. I think that's one of the best striper openers in several years. It yes. really is. It's I agree. catchy. It's memorable. And I yeah. mean, Robert on the double kick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're all going to be part of the class action suit against striper for whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would have put it, put it on you right there. Yeah. Well, Mr. Perry, I don't want to get in trouble with Miss Shelley. I'm certainly not trying to get you out of here, but I, I'm, a promise is a promise, and I always want to be on Miss Shelley's good side. So um, if this is where we need to say goodbye, I just want to say thank you again so much for blessing us. Hey, you're welcome, guys. Uh, love all you guys and what you do, you know, keeping the faith and keeping us out there and keeping the name going. It's awesome, man. I, I, I love that, and uh, I, I'm glad that there are people out there like you guys who are so passionate about this band and uh, it makes me feel great and honored to be in this band. So, uh, you know, guys like you, I mean, I never, I've never seen fans of any band like Striper has in all the years I've been in music, and it makes me feel great to be part of it. So, thank you. Well, thank you. We thank love you, everybody. Gary. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Thank you, guys. All right. Yeah, soon. We'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 Hey guys, we're back. Special block party with Area 312 discussing the final battle, the newest album from Striper. Um, 
have some wonderful friends on today. As you know, Mr. Perry Richardson uh, blessed us. We're thankful for that. I apologize on my end from some audio problems, or excuse me, audio and video problems I'm having. Friends, the subject today, the final battle, we're going by, have y'all heard of the Dewey Decimal System? We're going by the Dewey yeah. Decimal been System been today. Yeah. <laughs> so the three Ps, the three Ps to the Dewey Decimal System. We have presentation. We're going to be looking at the packaging and the cover and discussing our thoughts about that with the final battle. We'll be looking at production, the mixing, the soundscape, the tone, the atmosphere of the album, because as we all know, different albums have a different atmosphere to them. And we'll be looking at performance, the actual songs, uh, the playing, the hooks, the impact. So gentlemen, every song will have the potential to have one to three stars. One star being awful, two being average, three being awesome. Um, so every presentation, production, performance has the potential for three stars in each category. One awful, two average, three awesome. And we can add a bonus star to make 10 stars in total purchase. Was the album worth your purchase? Okay. So I'm going to write down everybody's name. And while I'm doing that, if we'll just go around the horn, Kevin, we'll start with you, buddy. Um, oh, looky here. We won't tell Jeremy who he missed until after he sees this. We're looking at the presentation. I believe that a cover says a lot. Um, Kevin, scale of one to three, one being the worst, three being the best. How would you rank the packaging and cover here to the final battle? What are your thoughts? Um, I'd probably give it like a 2.5. I really think the cover artwork on the final battle, it's, it's strong, it's powerful, it's colorful. Um, you know, when we used to buy, well, when I used to buy records, I mean, I would, I undoubtedly, I'd sit there probably and look at this for hours as I'd listen to the record over and over and over. It's fantastic. My, I love the art, all the photos, all that kind of cool stuff. I kind of wish there were some live photos in here. That would be a lot of fun. I think the biggest challenge to me is that takes up the whole back panel that's my only real quib is the font after seeing so many other things that are put out where the font is big, I can read it. Um, and, you know, that, that, that's really about it. I, I, I really like the, the, you know, the CD, how they do the thing on the disc, on the back. Again, I don't have the vinyl of this at all. You know, I, I, all of this stuff, they look great. I just wish I could not have to squint to read the text. Other than that, yeah, this is top notch, world class. Do you all do you all at clouds too, old man? Do I what? Do you all at the clouds too, there, old man? Clouds. Uh, Mark, what about you, buddy? Scale of one to three. Uh, well, I'm glad Kevin just gave me permission to do a point five because okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow him with exactly the same thing. Um, I love that cover. I love all of the everything since No More Hell to Pay. I think it's been awesome covers. The Hell of the Devil, I think, will always be my favorite uh, because it was, you know, the first of that style. And it was, at the time, it was so groundbreaking. And it's hard to believe now it was so controversial. Even with my readers, I can't, I have to actually get out a magnifier to read the, the lyrics. Uh, the Covers almost got a little too much going on. Uh, I don't want to say it's too busy, but there's a lot going on there, and it's just not quite as eye catching as the like goddamn evil. I love that one. Um, other than that, I mean, it's a great cover. I love the concept. Uh, Harry looks great there with his six point or his uh, six pack abs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give it a 2.5 as well. Yeah, there you go. Okay, 2.5 for you and Kevin. Mr. Dirk, what you got, buddy? I am giving it a solid three, okay. and I, I will tell you why. Uh, it fits in perfectly with this amazing last five studio albums, which are my personal favorites. No More Hell to Pay, followed by Fallen followed by Goddamn Evil, Even the Devil Believes, and now The Final Battle. But what it also does is 
for the first time we've seen the band members represented in the cover since to hell with the devil so it also harkens back to that classic era as well as being consistent with the modern era uh it's, it's great photography i just think it's an outstanding presentation now I, I i do concede the comments about the uh the print being small but i will say i really didn't think anything of that because i just started wearing readers in the last year so i just to me it didn't seem unusual because i'm uh, i'm in that era now so <laughs> I'm one of those. <laughs> Welcome to the club, yeah. So, <laughs> Lee, what you got, buddy? Well, I haven't got the physical copy because if I had to buy everything physical, I wouldn't have a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a brilliant cover. There's one thing I've got to say, it's so metal, isn't it, that cover? Yeah, it, is. it really yeah. is. Um, and, and funny enough, my favourite covers as well, I'm harking back what Mark said, to hell with the devil it really reminds me to hell with the devil and it also reminds me a little bit of no more hell to pay it's more more like painting than graphics if you know what i mean it's it's like yeah. a painted cover which i really love um but no I, I think it's an absolutely superb i'll give it a three out of three easy okay three out of three on the cover from the dewey oh, yeah. decibel system yep mr lee and we get to you, Dave Cruz, from the Covenant Metal Show. My physical copy is packed away. We're moving soon, so all my CDs are packed away. Um, but and 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 I agree with them, and and Lee as well is that the cover does, man. When I first saw it, it it immediately reminded me of, you know, the angel artwork for To Hell with the Devil. But still, I think it's really cool that they incorporated themselves on the cover. And uh, the only thing that I've heard anybody even gripe about is, you know, the glowing red eyes, you know. <laughs> and it's like, so what, man? It looks cool, you know. But yeah, 2.5. Um, and I, I agree with what the guys are saying, you know, how in some CDs, the lyrics are so clear. Even though they're small, you could still read them. Just because a font may look cool doesn't mean that people are going to be able to read it easily. So, yeah. I, I yeah. love all that. I love, I'm a guy that loves to read everything. And I don't, I, I mean, I want to know who the engineer is. I want to know who the assistant engineer is. I want to see and hear, like, who did the keyboard pads? Because when I was listening in headphones, I, you could hear the, I, I want to hear all that stuff and read all the thank yous. And yeah, and I mean, Perry had a huge list of thank yous here. I'm, I'm the old, I guess I'm just get off my lawn. It's too darn small. I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, incidentally, uh, this cover, Revelation 19, I won't read read the whole of it but Dave you mentioned some people were having a complaint about the eyes uh, in this but it clearly states in Revelation 19 12 talking about Christ his eyes were like a fiery flame yep. and on his head were many royal crowns so very much in line with scripture um, mm -hmm. you know as far as far as the the Christ depiction so there you have it Joel what are your thoughts about the presentation? What's your score? Well, I feel like I'm talking with people at the nursing home at this point. Good Lord. <laughs> Ratting shoe schmoud. Now, I want to say this is my favorite artwork for a front cover. It is very similar to the original To Hell with the Devil with it being, I guess, maybe the only one that I could think of with the four kind of members are on the cover and they're doing something within that cover. Um, I really, I, 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 can I give it a, a 3.5? Can I go above a three? I love this artwork. I think it is awesome. I don't really go back and read the lyrics like I used to. Maybe that's just, uh, you know, we got, like Kent was saying, there's so much going on in life that, you know, reading lyrics, I can listen to them if I need to hear them, but reading them is not really something I do like I used to back in the day. So maybe, maybe they're taking that into consideration where they're like, eh, maybe people aren't reading the lyrics like back in the day. And they can also look it up on the internet if they really want to know what it is all about. But it, when I thought the pictures from looking at what Kevin, you showed there, I think the pictures of the band look good. 
Uh, I, I really oh, wow. love, I love the artwork though. That is definitely my favorite album cover by the band. It's definitely better than Reborn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Get, getting slimed. Yeah. All right, Joel, come in. I'm, I'm, I gave you a three for that one, Joel. So uh, Okay, 3.3. 3. No. <laughs> Paul three Anderson days. laying in from Canada, buddy. What you think about the cover? I got the vinyl. <laughs> Paul Anderson, talk to us, buddy. What you think about that cover? What would you? Oh, my goodness, man. Absolutely a three out of three. No question. We're talking presentation here. This cover just waits. <laughs> Put it in front of your t shirt, Paul. Put it in front of your t shirt ah, so there. we can see it. Ah, there you go. There yeah, you go. You're there blending you go. in there. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I don't there have a go. green screen, so. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, I picked this up. This is the uh, colored vinyl. It's the uh, oh, no, that's not working either. Put it in front of you. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's, that's the uh, yellow and black marbled vinyl. Um, uh, Eighty dollars. It was about seventy some odd dollars. So a bit rich, but worth every penny in my opinion. And uh, it's the back cover. And same thing in here. Oops. Hey, bold. Good. Uh, nice. Artist uh, interest. I love it. I think that looks yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely love this album cover. It's just, it's a bold statement. And I think the LP has uh, some pictures that aren't on the CD and vice versa. Uh, actually, I think you. I think you might actually have more on the CD from the looks of it, from what you were showing earlier. Is there a sleeve, inner sleeve that the vinyl is in? Does that no, have just the, um, just the white sleeves and that's it. Okay. Yeah, there wasn't like an inner sleeve. I mean, you have Mike, Robert. Yeah, it looks like they, yeah. Uh, Oz. Perry in the band here i guess that gives you a reason to buy multiple copies then <laughs> there you go there you go jeremy what do you think buddy what's your opinion of the cover okay so for the cover i give it a three i love it i think it looks great for the rest of the packaging i give it a 1.5 to 2 um i like all the pictures uh, uh, in the cd jacket as everyone mentioned the font is too small that's, that's what when you put uh, a darker font on black, it's so hard to read. Uh, so that's a negative for me. It, aside from the pictures, everything else was dull to me with the inside. Uh, the back cover has the same photo as the front cover. Am, am I correct? I forgot to get my CD. I think it's the same picture. You're talking about this? Uh, and it's, that? it's the same. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. To, for me, as you know, because I like packaging, and this is what I critique on my show. To me, that's lazy. I, I don't like that personally. I love the front cover. I love the actual artwork, but I would have had like them uh, a reverse of that of, of them. Uh, you see the backside of that front cover or something different. Obviously, I know that costs money and all that good stuff, but um, and the CD has the same picture as the cover, correct? So again, it's like they're using it three times, which right. personally I just don't like. Uh, again, I love the front artwork. Uh, I love the pictures inside. Everything else, uh, I was not that impressed. But that's my uh, critique on that. Again, I'll, I'm going to be doing an episode on my Torrential Riff show about that, all of what I just said. But um, So good and bad for me. Gotcha. So for the exterior... You would give it a three, three. maybe for yep. the interior, a 1.5 to two. Yeah, okay. Le leaning more towards 1.5. Okay, and I appreciate your honesty, Jeremy. That's what it's and all about. So, you know, I like artwork. I like design. I like the way, it, how it's laid out. And I wasn't that impressed. Gotcha. Rex, my friend, what do you think about the cover? What would you rate it and what are your thoughts? I was like, okay. I hope I get a better quality picture, but there's something just weird about it. It's not crisp and clear. I can't put my finger on it. It just seems slightly like out of focus. I mean, the other, their other album covers are a little grainy. Of, 
Yeah, there's something. Yeah. And so I, I just was like a little curious about that. And then when I saw the official press release and it looked the same, I'm like, um, I'm not sure about the lightsabers on it either. Um, just, uh, yeah. Um, and of course, we've talked about. The I forgot fact. I heard people mention that. <laughs> it does, it does look I like just, I, I don't, I'm just like, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, and the, of course, the printing is terrible. I, yeah, I can't read that at all. Um, so um, I like the idea and I like the idea of all four band members, like was mentioned, like you haven't seen that since to hell with the devil. So I'm giving the this category two stars. Boy, this is a dual-edged sword right here for me. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, Dirk, to your point, to your point, Dirk, what a nice collection. What a nice array of five albums. And they fit nicely together. Uh, they're a, a, nice catalog, a nice catalog within the more modern albums. Um, and if you notice, though, and here's, here's, where, I, here's where it gets, I don't know, so here's, you know, of course, the final battle, GDE, which is out of order because I, so even the devil believes, and of course we had GDE, then we had Fallen, and then we had the one that kind of started it all with this collection here, No More Hell to Pay. I just noticed for the first time, Kent, there's a recurring pattern and all five of those albums, you've got fire, you've got the reddish orange color at the bottom, and then you've got like a blue color at the top. All five of those have that. I never realized that until just now. So that's where I was going with this. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No, it's all about all about the discussion. That's my point. Brilliant covers, hmm. beautiful covers. Um, my least favorite, and forgive me if I'm stepping on toes, but that's you know to each their own. My least favorite is this one um just the cover of it but that's my point on the one hand when they stand on their own they're they're beautiful they're wonderful covers mm -hmm. and we could even say six because let's not forget the one that started it all i i didn't think to bring my vinyl i have the cover to hell with the devil okay so on the one hand you have a wonderful collection on the other hand guys you have, and here's my album of the Yellow and Black Attack, the original. Wow. And then similar with the color scheme, of course, Yellow and Black, the Striper, Soldiers Under Com Command. I certainly wish the CDs would be the original cover for To Hell with the Devil, but we all know that cover, right? It's the same color palette as all of these. <laughs> but then we get to In God We Trust. Boy, what an album this is. Against the law. Against the law. So you got the blue one. I have the orange one. The cover is actually orange on the one yeah, that I have. Right. Yeah. The so, blue is the original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's the point, guys. Let's look at these covers. And there's the yellow and black attack behind me. Let's look at these covers. And the difference between these, we'll call that the classic striper period. The difference between that, whoops, and these is variety. Now, again, beautiful covers, but very similar in scope to the color scheme. With the original classics, you had variety. And so <laughs> I'm going to give the cover for the presentation aspect, I'm giving it a three. I can't fault the front cover. It's beautiful. Lightsabers are questionable. <laughs> That's already been <laughs> done with Force 3 back in 1988, Pure Metal Records. But, remember that one, Kevin? But, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, the cover's wonderful. I am missing the variety. And so as a Striper fan, let me say that my druthers, I have some druthers with each category. 
I love, as we all do, To Hell with the Devil. But the song and the album, to me, has become Striper's rock and roll all night. Yeah. As an old Kiss fan, love the song. It's catchy. It's all get out. But, guys, I'm tired of rock and roll all night. Okay? I love Striper. But I'm tired, frankly, of everything to hell with the devil. Um, it doesn't mean it's not a great song. It doesn't mean I don't love Striper. But, but I'm seeing a color pattern to the album, and things are just kind of getting run into the ground <laughs> with me. Three for me, though, on the cover. It's a great presentation in and of itself. But do you all see my point? Do you all see my point about the sameness a little it's getting bit? Getting redundant. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So it might be time to mix it up just a little bit. I think it's great. It's a great collection to Dirk's point, but maybe for the future, mix it up a little bit. So you know, one thing, Kent, I was just thinking as you were going as you're you you didn't include um <laughs> You didn't include Murder by Pride. You didn't include Second Coming, which we don't need another album cover like that. The Covering <laughs> or um, Reborn. Reborn yeah. So it's it's interesting to me. I'm just thinking about this. That's that, we'll call it the middle period. Since they've been on Frontiers, and I'd have to go back and look to see who the artist is, but is it the same artist with the label? And is that artist going, I don't know what to do different because, you know, I mean, so that, that's just, that's kind of just my, I just, th just thought about that as you were going through that going, cause you've got the, the, the classics and then the current, and then we have this middle period and I just, but everything, because since they've been on Frontiers, sometimes the labels have people that do the artwork. And maybe that's the part of the issue. I don't know. Well, I think you're right, Kevin. I think it's the same artist that have done all those albums on Frontiers. And his name escapes me right now. But Dennis I know. Decker. Who is it? Dennis Decker. Yes. I think though they've all been kind of a theme. And I, I personally like it. Like, and it even the lightsabers might seem a little funny, but at the same token, I think in this modern world, when when you're when you're a band like Striper and you're reaching out to the to the unsaved and 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 whatnot, to throw in a little lightsaber, I think is actually kind of cool. Well, and to your point, Paul, it is the sword of light. It is the word of light. So mm -hmm. I understand the symbolism. So, yeah, to, into it, guys, it's a discussion, as we all know, no right or wrong to each their own. I'm just presenting honest thoughts, just like my brother Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, I brutally honest sometimes. Guys. guys, let's move along because we're on uh, we're on Lee's time on the UK, UK time. So production, guys, uh, we're talking about the mixing to the final battle, the soundscape, the atmosphere and tone of it. Uh, one to three stars. Kevin, what are your thoughts and what's your score? Um, well, I actually went back and I listened to all the albums prior, um, well, from Fallen forward. Um, and honestly, I like how this is produced. Um, Robert's got a decent drum sound. Everything is clean. It's clear. It's crisp. And it punches. So I'm listening to it because like, normal, like the rest of you, when do I listen to most of this stuff? In my car, to and from work. And, you know, so when I last week or I, I wrote my review for Heaven's Metal magazine and um, I went back through and I, I re-listened to the album again in, my, in the headphones, essentially, and it sounds really solid. Um, is it the best sounding record of all time? No, but it's it's produced incredibly well. It's not like there's something I'm going to fault with it. Um, it's, there's not there sometimes with some of the striper stuff, I notice where, um, when they play, like when they're doing, um, I think it's see no evil, hear no evil in the beginning, you get the guitar riff and the riff, it doesn't sound 
thin. It sounds crunchy. It sounds beefy. But sometimes I'm thinking it sounds just kind of like it's missing this one little thing to push it forward. And, um, but on the whole, everything sounds great. Michael's voice sounds fantastic. Um, the bass, the guitars. And then, like I say, there are keyboard pads you can hear that I'm like, but they're just there enough to fill out the sound. They don't dominate. It's not like it's, it. no disrespect. It's not like it's Journey or something like that. You know, um, they, it sounds, it, it's a great sounding record. So, you know, I, I'd give it a three. Sure. Kevin, to your point, you mentioned by name, uh, hear no evil, see no evil. Mm -hmm. There's one little keyboard flourish in there, I think in the chorus. And it's just a very, it's a touch of deep purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a touch, and I'm like, I've never heard that nuance before in a striper song, so I applaud that. You mentioned that, and it spur sparked that in my mind. Yeah, can I add something also, Kevin? And, and this is, I don't know if this is what you're kind of saying too. I made a note about that song, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, where it's a very generic, basic beginning where it's just the doom, doom. Do do in my note and what I was kind of wanting to say about what I miss Robert, what he used to do is go back to a song like um oh was it loving you or or what it, I mean the the off timing fills he would do from wrong between, to right. Yeah, any of that old stuff, the off timing like just just crazy fills he would do in between instead of just doing do do. I miss him doing that stuff. Yeah. And that would have been a perfect song for him to bring something like that in instead of just having the basic and then it leads into the beginning. And I miss Robert doing that stuff where as opposed to the beginning albums, he doesn't really do that, that kind of stuff. And I don't know if that's maybe something that you, you were kind of going with there or or more production side of things, but the, it's just in this a instance, basic it's intro. More, pro, more production side. Um the song part of it when we get to it, that that's a that's a different little different thing, but production just how how everything is defined you know um just how again it, it's crisp you know i can hear oz i can hear mike i can mm. hear perry i can hear robert and then again they have a couple folks that add these little key parts they're they're pads essentially to kind of fill out the sound but part of that i guess and maybe i'm jumping when i say it should be the arrangement which is more on the song side than the production side. Um, as far as, you know, you're talking about how that song starts. There are just some things I notice where it could sound a little fuller. Maybe if they had doubled, I don't know. It doesn't sound to me like they doubled the guitar on that. Um, it's kind of, sometimes it's pretty common. If you have one guitar player, you play the same part three times. But the guy, that, that used to be really common. You would layer it. It would give you a fuller sound. Um, but you, uh, you know, I don't hear that in this case. So, um, But it, it's more, to me, this the production. It's like Michael sounds fantastic on this record. Mark, what are your thoughts, buddy? What's your score? And what are your thoughts about the, the production, the soundscape, the atmosphere, the tone? Well, I got to be honest, until I got hooked up with Lee, I never paid a whole lot of attention to production. Um, I mean, it really just boiled down to whether I liked the songs or not. I didn't put that much emphasis on the, you know, the balance of the instruments. Or Not, not to say I was oblivious to it. I literally remember the first time I ever heard Black Sabbath Born Again. It sounded like it was recorded in a drawer. Uh, <laughs> Kiss, Hotter Than Hell, is probably my favorite Kiss album. It, very muddy, murky, and that kind of added to the charm of it. But as, a, as my relationship with Lee through the years, he was always a lot of emphasis on production. And I found myself paying more attention to that. 
And now I put as much emphasis on production as I do on the quality of the songs just from, you know, hearing him uh, talk about it. But I think it's, it's crisp. It's, I, I, you know, I can hear every instrument clearly. Uh, I'd give it a three. I, I can't fault anything. I mean, Michael, you know, we all know Michael's an amazing singer. He's an amazing guitarist. You know, he's, he's not just a double threat. He's a, he's a quadruple threat. He's an awesome singer. He's an awesome guitarist. He's an amazing songwriter and he's a great producer. Um, there's not a whole lot of people on the scene now that, you know, I can say that about, but yeah, I think he did a fantastic job on this one. Very cool. So a three, so, yeah, I, give it a three. I, I give it a three. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Dirk, what are your thoughts on production? Well, I would concur with uh, Kevin's comments. I mean, practically everything that he just said, and I don't think I could say it quite as eloquently and quite as thoroughly and technically as he could. So I'll, I'll kind of go another direction on the description. When Second Coming came out, we saw what a modernized Striper could do with those classic songs and it, with the appropriate mix. And to me personally, that album has become my definitive version of those classic songs. And they came out with the covering and they just really showed their chops, you know, what they could do with, um, with uh, those musics and that song. And they got respect from people like Rob Halford at Judas Priest. I was at Judas Priest in Queensryche last night. I saw him in concert. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a metal guy, you know, and, uh, you know, faith-based music is probably about 10% of my collection, and that includes Striper. So I listen to Striper. I love the faith-based message, but I listen to him because it's music that I would listen to anyway. So when No More Hell to Pay came out, that was everything that I hoped for as a fan from a modernized Striper. And these albums have just gotten, um, have these last five albums have, have, have that's just continued to, play out for me in the mix and the production. I've been to the studio, I've met Danny, I've met Paul, I've uh, seen that process happen. Um, so, I, and I don't think I'm letting personal attachment get in the way, getting into this, but I've got to give it a solid three. And uh, most of the time I listen to this in my car, but I have had a chance to listen to it with a good set of headphones on. And then I do something just kind of very subjective and fun. I do what, what I call the Harley test. I go out on my motorcycle, I crank it up and I say, is this something that is like ACDC or Van Halen? Is it cool to listen to on a motorcycle? And it passes the Harley test with flying colors. And I will tell you, the original Reborn album does not. With that mix, I, I can't listen to it on my bike with the, all the sound around and everything, but I can listen to the Michael Sweet version of Reborn on my motorcycle. So. That's I can't listen to it on my bicycle. With the training wheels, right? UK. How does it sound out there, the production? Yeah, I mean, if Michael Sweet gets to watch this and anyone has a go at the production, that's probably what we're upsetting more than anything, I reckon. He's, he's very proud of the way these albums sound, I think. That's his, you know, that's, that's what he talks about mainly, you know. Um, I, I really like it. I think it's crystal clear. There's one thing I would say about this. I think the drums and the bass are really prominent. I mean, probably more than they've ever been, I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm a bit worried that I think that the, the guitars, they are loud enough, but I think any lower... And it, you might lose some power there. I think, you know, I mean, they, them guitars need to be at the forefront. For me, I'm a guitar bloke, you know, I mean, I love drums and bass. And, and I think a lot of bands these days lose, they don't have it loud enough, drum and bass. But it's almost Michael is really pushing the envelope to have the drum and bass really loud on this. And um, on some songs, uh, well, I wrote, I think it was um, a one song I, no rest for the wicked, I think it is. It's almost like the guitar is taking second fiddle a little bit to the bass and the drums. I think he's, I think he's gone really to the max on here. And I, I love the production. I think it's great. I, I don't think I could give it any 
I don't think I could go lower than a three because it's so much better compared to a lot of production these days. Mm. But I think I don't think he needs to go any louder with that drum and <laughs> the drums and bass. I think he's pushed it to the limit there. Um, almost though, I don't know. It's, a lot of people have mentioned um, Second Coming, and if you actually listen to that as well, especially the kick drum. It's almost too loud on some of those songs. I think, is it more than a man? I think they, they redid, didn't they, on Second Coming? I think and so. if you actually listen to the kick drum on that song, that's near enough all you can hear and you hone in on it and it's too much. I think he needs to, you know, on the next album maybe, you know, turn them guitars up a touch. Uh, but have that bass and drums like that, but then guitars need to go up a touch on some songs, I think in my opinion but i can't it's so good the production it's hard to it's hard to fault it but that's the only thing i would say i was a, i really i really love guitars i really love it when they hit you you know you feel them in your chest and uh, i think you can feel the bunk bass and the drums in your chest for on this album maybe not the guitars so much but there you go so uh, a three with a caveat or two huh <laughs> it's it, because you've got a two at an average and a three at a what's your three like perfect is that what's yeah what's yeah three, three it, is awesome, awesome two is average awesome. one is all it's awesome. almost you haven't you haven't got enough numbers there mate yeah you know <laughs> like what I mean? two point two point eight two point <laughs> yeah. nine yeah yeah exactly yeah all righty i got you down for a three though lee so yeah dave yeah. what do you think um, about the production you know the production you know overall um it, it took some getting used to when you know they started with the last five albums, um, you know, with uh, No More Hell to Pay. And out of the last five albums, the only one that I honestly did not care for was GDE. Um, in my personal opinion, there was three decent songs on there. The rest of the album to me was just fillers. Um, that's why when they came out with Even the Double Believes, I'm like, okay, cool. This is good. This is good. And then... The final battle comes out and not one even mediocre song the whole thing is just just blew me away and i was actually listening to it earlier uh before you know we started the deal today and uh because i'm gonna have to bounce here so um i could just give you a quick rundown of of you know my scores okay. um you know i i the the song i would have to say is that my two favorite songs on the album, Transgressor and See No Evil, Hear No Evil. A close third is Out, Up, and In, I believe it's called. Um, followed by No Rest for the Wicked. And I just love all of those songs. Um, actually, on my show yesterday, I played, um, I don't know, Friday, actually. I played Ashes to Ashes, um, the last track on the album. And uh, same old story, that song, when I first heard it, I didn't like it, but then, then I heard it a few more times and it grew on me. And then now I listen to it and I just find myself singing along to it. And uh, overall, I'm good. I would give the album a three out of three, sincerely. Very well, uh, very good songwriting. And I think it was produced very well. Uh, Michael did a really good job. All the guys did a great job. So overall, yeah, three out of three. Definitely. Okay, so a three for the production, and then because you're having the bounce, a three on the performance with the song? Yes, sir. to you buddy on the production mm -hmm. what are your thoughts about it the mixing the soundscape the atmosphere of the album i want to say michael sweet is a good striper producer i don't know how he would do outside i know he's done stuff in the past i, I know he's grown as a producer with I, I want to say his first production was with mass mm -hmm. i want to say that was the first album he nice. produced and he has really grown as striper's producer and i'd say I don't think anybody else could do it. I want to give it a three. I don't want to keep this going too long, but I'll give it a three. 
I always look at things from a drummer's perspective and listening to the drums first thing. And there's always things I, I feel like could be a little bit better, but I think it's always, he, he does such a great job with each album that's came out. Okay. How about you, Paul? What do you think about the production? Um, I'll go a three with the caveat as well. Um, amazing. Uh, like everyone's noticing the drums, the, the bass really punching through on every song it's uh and that's something that i never paid attention to before but you can't help but pay attention now um the only thing i would say uh about this album is i have had to go and read the lyrics a little bit more compared to even the devil believes uh i found even the devil believes like every vocal lyric seemed to really come out really well uh, I didn't have to go and read the lyrics too much to see what Michael was saying. Um, so that's the only thing I would put on this one. But my gosh, it's just a brilliant album from beginning to end. As I I'll even steal uh, Lee's Thunder here. All killer, no filler, total frustration. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> Jeremy, what are your thoughts, buddy, on the production? Um, this was a, a slight... Again, I agree with Lee. I think there's too much bass. Not not bass guitar, but just bass, the overall bass. Compared to, when you compare it to even the Devil Believes, which I think is perfect. This was, for me, everybody like, and everybody likes, some people like it more bass heavy, some people like it less. So that's very per, a personal thing. But for me, I'm going to go in, I remaster it and bring the bass down so I can enjoy it to what the way I like it. So I would give it a 2.5. I know I hate to give 0.5s, but it, it it's not it doesn't ruin the record, but as other people have noticed, I think it's just slightly too bassy for me. Um, but overall, like everything else it sounds great. Um again, Michael Sweet as producer is excellent. Um but that's my take on that. I'm a little more critical than some people, but that's just what I do. <laughs> No right or wrong, buddy. It's all your thoughts. Rex, what are your thoughts on this, partner? Um, well, you know, those guys at Spirit House, they just have this, you know, locked in so good now with doing all these albums and Danny and those guys and Michael, you know, um, uh, you know, yeah, there's some definite drums are up there in the mix and that, uh, but I, I can't give it anything less than a three. Um, it's just incredible. My thoughts, guys, um, I give it a three. Uh, and Jeremy, I'm, I'm a little bit, I guess, different than you. And what I liked about it was I'm getting a good bass definition, meaning a good definition on the bass guitar to pair it. Um, if you want to hear Tim's excellent bass work, listen to Against the Law, a brilliant album from all of those guys, in my humble opinion. Tim's base work, Tim's base work really shines through. With the more modern albums, in my humble opinion, the bass has kind of always been in the background. And even on, I mean, where's the bass on Soldiers Under Command? You listen to Against the Law, excuse me, you listen to To Hell with the Devil and In God We Trust. The bass is just kind of in there, but it's hard, it's, it's not defined. To me, Perry's bass on this album has a great definition to it. And a perfect example, if you listen to Heart and Soul, there's some bass punch in there. Um, I don't get a muddy bass sound, Jeremy. I'm getting a well-defined bass. Now, back when in my little humble, humble little assimilation of a band, when we would go to the studio, the engineer used to say, take this mix out to your car and see how it sounds. It's the car stereo mix is what they call it. And if it sounds good in there, they say that's a good mix because where do most people listen to music when they're traveling? Mm -hmm. um, I listen to most of this album in my truck and a little bit, you know, here at home, but I'm just getting a good sound. I like what I'm hearing. With regard to production, I'm, I'm liking the fact that I'm not hearing 
there's some chances being taken. I'm hearing a well-defined base. I'm hearing more of Robert's drumming. Now, Joel, to your point, I understand what you're saying as a drummer. Or do you miss some of that? Flare. Just kind of flare. Flare of Robert. It's more straight on. But I'm hearing more drum passages mm -hmm. on this album. Um, what I wish, guys, with regard to production, and most people have said Michael does Striper well. I can't argue with that. But I would love to hear as, as far as production. I bet you Perry Richardson has a great voice. I bet you Oz Fox has a great voice. In fact, I know they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would absolutely love for once in Striper's history <laughs> to hear Oz Fox sing lead vocal on a Striper song. I would absolutely love to hear Perry Richardson sing lead vocal on a Striper song. Not discounting mine at all. But these are production calls, guys. This is what a producer does. Part of what he does. Let's try this, guys. And so I would love to hear that. I would love to hear a great bass solo in a song or a wonderful drum breakdown. Yeah. Um, or or I mean, even uh, songs written by them. Because Michael writes That was the other the thing right there. I mean, you know, we got into some of that. Uh, you guys know the history. And I would just like to hear some variety. Very strong album we're talking about here. So far, I've given it two different threes. But I would love to hear at this stage in the game with Striper something to really bring a dynamic, a dynamite. Wow. You know, this is different. Just my thoughts. Shoot me. C certainly Oz has written songs that could be on these albums I and mean, why i don't know why i mean that could be personal michael's decision he runs the band we all know that uh but certainly he's got to have some great material as great as a guitarist he is and we even know robert writes music he had his own solo album with larry world you know it would be something to change up the variety would be something interesting and i'd be willing to take that risk as a fan to hear that you got to be. Um, you're totally right. You, got, they, they, they. It's such a thin line, isn't it? From people that those striper fans that are just happy to hear the same stuff all the time, and they would go like, you know, if striper, it's almost like you've got to please those fans. But as musicians, they want to try something new. It's it must be such a hard balance, mustn't it, to not upset the old fans, but give something a little bit different. I know exactly what you're saying. It almost becomes stale in the end, doesn't it? If you keep producing the same album, if you like. But, but, one, um, but have one song out of 11 or whatever, that surely wouldn't upset the Apple cart, I wouldn't think. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, well, maybe. I was just going <laughs> to say, I've always thought Oz should have had a lead vocal as well. And to me, you know, he got his, he got his nickname Oz because allegedly he sounded like Ozzy Osbourne when he was in high school. The perfect opportunity for Oz to take a lead vocal would have been when they covered either After Forever or Over the Mountain. I thought that would have been a perfect time mm. to give Oz the microphone and let him do his thing. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why they... Uh, uh, Oz sounds so similar to Michael too. It's crazy how similar their vocals are too. And it's perfect when they harmonize. Yeah. I'm glad some other people, I'm glad that we're not afraid, guys, to talk about it openly and like we're not committing a cardinal sin if we talk about a little variance here. Uh, Ken, sorry, just yeah. one just one really quick thing. This is a, a bit of a, a bugbear for, I know it is for Michael Sweet, that when fans say they missed a production of, and you, it's good, I'm really glad you mentioned there, you mentioned Soldiers <laughs> Under Command. And um, a lot of fans say, oh, yeah, you know, these albums don't sound as good as Soldiers Under Command. That is just rubbish. I mean, right. if, 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 could you imagine if that production now, if the next album, the next Striper <laughs> album in two years had that production, right? <laughs> you they would spent, do, you would, you they would spent just go, 10 what? days, but they yeah. spent 10 days on Soldiers Under Command total. Right. It's nostalgia, isn't it? It's nostalgia. It's it, it what you remember. It is it's nostalgia. Just, but then when they is. did To Hell with the Devil, and then when they did In God We Trust, they spent like, what, almost a million yeah. bucks producing In God We Trust. Yeah. So The best sounding album for me, 
if you talk, say it's classic Striper, the best sounding album for me was Against the Law. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you. Absolutely. And it was quite similar to the production now, I would say. Quite I don't similar. miss the production. I just miss the songwriting, perhaps. Yeah. 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 Those Kirk, songs are so classic. really quick, I agree with you totally. Second Coming, that's my quintessential of the classic albums. That's my go to now to hear the old songs. Mm-hmm. So, absolutely. And here's the hope, and we have a second coming too with a, a beefed up version production wise of The God We Trust. I'd love mm-hmm. to see that. That would be awesome. So, Kevin Carruthers, back to you, buddy, on the performance. Let's talk about the playing, any hooks in the song or lack thereof or the impact and staying power of the songs. Okay, so let me just say this. I've been a fan since 84. I heard about Striper in Campus Life magazine in December of 83. There was They had gotten signed to Enigma. There was this little blurb. And I was like, what is this? And had this photo of these four got Bumblebee guys. And it said... Hey, this band from SoCal, they got signed to, you know, their new out, their album will be out this summer and they're signed to Enigma Records. And it was like, okay. And then I heard nothing. I just, I kept the mag, I don't have it anymore, but I had kept the article going, well, when, when is this coming out? They said this summer, he said this summer, they said this summer. And You know, I'm listening to Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and all this other stuff. I'm getting to a point here is that I've been, I bought it in August of 84, Yellow and Black Attack. I got one of the original covers. If you look at your cover, Kent, my original, the cover, you miss like two thirds of that hand. Most of everything below, I mean, you don't even see the RS on my, the cover. I've, it's because they said that was the original print and they cut the artwork so i i was like okay but these guys you know they were i've been a fan forever the last five striper records have all been hit or miss for me all of them um Fallen. Everyone says Fallen's so great. I'm like, okay, other than Yahweh and a couple of the singles, or how about what what songs are that memorable? I love No More Hell to Pay. That song is brilliant. Sympathy is brilliant. This album absolutely rocks. Period. The title track, Transgressor. One of the things that Striper does is everything is very formulaic. Every album, Transgressor, sounds like, you know, what what was the album opener for the last album? Blood from Above. Blood from Above. The same type of riff. Like, if you you went back and you listened to To Hell with the Devil and In God We Trust, though those songs you can go the upbeat or mid-tempo and then the pop song then kind of a mid-tempo rocker where it's a little different then the ballad then the heavy song and then you have the single there was very formulaic and i don't don't misunderstand me that's not a knock it's just it's what they do every band does this if they've had consistency that iron maiden you know, for several albums, the first out al- the first song was all based off of the, the D chord, a second bridge bar. I mean, you listen to it, it's an Adrian Smith thing, but now they've changed some of that and they've gotten this whole proggy thing. Having said that, this is I can listen to this now. There are, you know, transgressor. It took me a time or two or three to get into it because I was like, okay. See no evil, hear no evil. Joel, you're talking about that but um bump. I call it the striper plod. Please. It's not, it's just, it's what they do. And I was the first time I heard that song, I went, this sounds like get you know, something just this slow mid mid tempo thing, and then all of a sudden it kicks into high gear. Um, same old story. Okay, great song, great hook, heart and soul. This song, what a riff, okay? 
I've never been a fan of ballads. Near is a good song. I don't care for honestly, never have, never will. All of me, just not my thing. Um, out, Up, and In, great tune. Rise to the Call is a top drawer, top five, top 10 song in the last five, six records, period. Um, the Way, The Truth, and The Life. And what I divine by this is I've listened to this record probably 20 times now. I haven't listened to the other albums 20 times, guys, because here, here's something I, I, I thought about, too, is sometimes we hear the same. I, I'll listen to a record. And where do I start? The first song. Well, after you heard the first song three, four, five times, and you're going, I'm at work, I got to get out. So then you come in, you never get to the rest of the record. So Till Death Do Us Part, really memorable. No rest for the wicked. If that's not a George Lynch riff, that is just, and then it gets into the chorus, man, ashes to ashes. If that's not a ashes to ashes. <laughs> Your fist is up. Your blood is pumping. You're like, yes. And then you go back and you want to listen to the whole record all over again. <laughs> um, I give it a three. I probably would give it a 2.8, honestly. Sorry to say it like that. <laughs> but it, it, it's this is a great album. It's not my best album of 2021. That's for a different band and a different show. But this album, I, I think this is the best frontiers album period the other albums all have great songs but consistently song from song to song to song they're more memorable in my opinion the performance the the only thing i wish i could hear more and and, and i'm gonna just say it i can't hear oz's lead playing now maybe i'm missing it because he has a very distinct way of playing his lead you listen to the way you listen to some of the old stuff. He's a very heavy guy with the whammy bar and tremolo. I'm just like, so what songs does Oz play lead on here? Well, maybe that's because of what he went through also, I wonder. Absolutely. I would agree with that. And I think that's also why there probably aren't any Oz songs. Anytime a band has two lead guitar players, I wish they'd break it down and say, uh, you know, and some bands do, you know, Murray here or Tipton here or what have you. This record, it's a fantastic striper album, period. Okay, I'm done. Murray and Tipton, Tipton, that two of the best guitarists out there, right? They I'm can be. I'm just joking. I, I, I agree with you on that. I wish I wish sometimes they would say who did play the solos on that. I would I would love to know that as a fan. You know, and, until even, until it's showtime. Even if it's all just Mike, okay. <laughs> I mean, right. I get it, but it, it I would it would be so cool going, oh man, because like you know, when you listen to the soldiers under command, they trade off. Mm -hmm. You know, if you listen to the if you listen to the version, they trade off, and you can tell Mike plays one way, Oz plays another way. Against the law, huge difference, you could tell, but now he can't. I don't even know, guys. I've searched and maybe I overlooked it. I didn't see any songwriting credits on this album. No, I didn't see any either. It's all Michael. The right before we get to Mark, the introduction to Transgressor reminds me of that middle section of Divider. You know what I'm talking about? That roll yeah. in. Mark, what do you think, buddy, on the performance? Performance is top notch. Uh, you know, going back to Michael again, we all we all know what an incredible guitarist he is. But I think it's awesome that he finally getting off track just a little bit. He finally got to stretch his wings as a guitarist in that band, Iconic, where he's you know doing some vocals, but primarily he's there as a guitarist. Uh, about a year ago, Lee and I and a buddy of mine did a show on our fantasy band where we assembled musicians from different bands. Lee picked Michael not as a vocalist, but as a guitarist. 
I, th I thought that was awesome, you know, because he is that good of a guitarist. Um, I agree. I would like to know. I've kind of gotten to where I can pick out Michael versus Oz in, in a lot of the songs, but it would be nice to know who's playing the solos in each songs. Uh, but, you know, again, I can't say anything negative about the, the virtuosity. They're top notch. I got to give them a three on that. Um, now, I'm not Catholic, but I feel like a Catholic going to confession for what I'm about to say. Um, shortly after I got this album, I'd listened to it two or maybe three times. I sent Leah a, a message and I said, I can't believe I'm saying this or it pains me to say this, but I said, this might be my least favorite of the last five Striper albums. And I based that solely on the fact that there was not one standout track to my ears. No More Hell to Pay is a perfect song to me. There's nothing I would change in it. Yahweh is a perfect song. There's nothing I would change in it. Uh, sorry, I love sorry, except for that one word, <laughs> charming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's not a song on here that is absolutely perfect to my ears. There, there's something in each song that doesn't quite give it the top of the mountain for me. Um, now, that said, after listening to it, I've probably listened to the album probably 20 times now. It definitely gets better with each listen. Uh, Kent, a while back, made the analogy of having more hooks than a bass fisherman's tackle box. Uh, there are four, to my ears, there are four standout tracks. Uh, my favorite is probably Rise to the Call. Uh, absolutely love that one. Um, Transgressor. I don't know if anybody else picked up on it. When I first heard it, I said, what does that remind me of? Then it dawned on me. To me, it sounds like Bizarre from uh, One Sided War. Uh, it's got a lot of similarities with that song from Michael's solo album, but great song. Um, See No Evil, Hear No Evil. To me, that sounds like you took No More Hell to Pay, Revelation in the Valley and threw them in a blender and you get that song from it. Uh, it's got vibes from all those songs. I love the darker side of Striper when they play these slower brooding riffs. Uh, I mean, I gravitate toward the darker kind of music anyway. I'm not talking about Merciful Fate kind of dark, but you know, it's, it's almost Sabbathy in a way. Uh, I love that style. From Striper, and I love it when a band that you don't typically associate with those darker sounds comes out with something like that. Uh, it just makes it that much stronger to me. Um, also, that song has a, I love the, the regimented, almost militant stomp in that song, um, which harkens back to the valley. Um, and then Near, I think, is probably the best, my ears, the best ballad they've done since The One. Uh, only one song on the album I don't care for that I find myself skipping. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it. Out, Up, and In just doesn't, just doesn't grab me for whatever reason. Not a bad song. Don't hate it. But I find myself hitting the skip button when that one comes on. One of my least favorites, too. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's not it's not reach out. You know, I don't dislike it that much. Anyway, I'm babbling. Overall, I would give the songs as a whole uh, because the strong ones do kind of outweigh the, the ones that don't do it that much for me. I'll give it a 2.5. And one thing I wanted to mention that I hadn't heard anybody else mention, I don't know if anybody's even thought about it. You realize this is the first album since the Yellow and Black Attack it was not named for a song on the album. Mm, there, there, is no, there is no title track on this album. Every album after the Yellow and Black Attack was named after a song on the album up until now. I wonder why that was. But 
Mark, did you not hear the uh, the hidden track? Final <laughs> no, battle. No, I don't. I that's don't a have joke, a hidden track on mine. <clears throat> that's a joke. Interestingly, interestingly enough, though, you mentioned Black Sabbath, the way, the truth, and the life. When it starts after the the initial groove, um, I'm getting some reminiscence of of heaven and hell. Okay, yeah, to the, yeah, uh, yeah. that song. So yeah, anyway, right. But enough about that, Dirk. Where are you at, buddy? On well, the I, performance, I will go back to my theme of this quintet of five albums that I love so much that I keep going back to. I will agree with Kevin's comment that of those five, Fallen is probably my least favorite of the five and by least favorite i mean the one i love the least because it's my fifth favorite striper album uh i do not feel like this album topped even the devil believes i do not feel that it topped no more hell to pay i would put it probably right in the middle with um with goddamn evil and to mark's point what i think this this album it has 11 very solid tracks if we get another seven striper albums of this caliber, I'm going to be a very oh, yeah. Yeah. happy camper. We don't have the, va the valley, Yahweh, a revelation of more than a man, a soldier's under command, a divider, a do unto others. You know, there's, there's just not quite that, oh, wow, right. um, particular song on the album. What I love about it, I love the, the way they open and close the album with a really heavy track. Uh, we had opening with Transgressor, uh, closing with Ashes to Ashes. I felt like those were just perfect bookends for the album. I really like uh, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, kind of that darker, eerie beginning, almost a Dio vibe to it. And I, I'm a rocker. I always talk about how I love the heavier songs and it, you know, it can't be heavy enough. But I find myself gravitating to these songs like Heart and Soul, that are more experimental and have these tempo changes and really pack an emotional punch. Uh, Invitation Only was a song like that. So, I mean, I, I just absolutely love this album. There's, there's so much uh, I could say about it. When you got songs like Near and Till Death Do Us Part and you, you say, is it, a, is it a ballad? Is it a rocker? I don't know. I can't classify it. I, I think that's, that's a good thing. I think it's a positive thing. I really liked how on Near, you saw that striper duality in that writing of it could be a song about a relationship yeah. that you have with a person, or it could be a song about God. Now, I think I don't speak for Michael, but I did hear him say recently that he wrote that song about Lisa. But I, I just, I love that duality and that open to interpretation like we saw, um, you know, on the earlier classic Striper tunes. I did like that you could hear the drums really come through on some of these songs, like Rise to the Call, that da 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 So there's just, um, I'm, I'm going to wear this one out. I absolutely love it. I'm a 2.9. 2.9. <laughs> All right. 2.9. <laughs> and I've got I've to gotta say, too, for... Uh, uh, before you move on, Lee Lee put it in perspective. When I sent him that email, he responded and he he said to him, "It's the most consistent." And somebody else mentioned it earlier. I forget who it was. The most consistent Striper album. All the songs are are that close. There is there may not be that one standout track, but all the songs, you know, depending on the listener, are good songs. And I and I do tend to agree with that. It is a very I consistent album. I can I concur. Yeah, there are no skippers. There are no. As I kept listening to it, the tracks continually got better. Yeah, I agree. Um, because I agree. I'll tell you, when I first listened through it, I just kind of went, "Okay, yeah. um, I like yeah. Rise to the Call." That that was the standout song initially, and as I kept and I didn't care for Transgressor. I thought the intro was way too long because it just kept going and going and go. But as I kept listening to it, and I kept just getting, these are what the songs are. Not what I expect them to be, but what right. they are. And I was like, man, this is really, really, for me, really good. Dirk, during your assessment, you know, you were talking about the different songs. And one of them you mentioned was Near. And, you know, Lee might say there in the UK, he might coin that as a power ballad, right, Lee? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> a ballad with teeth. A ballad with teeth, Mark. 
That's right. One That's of the things that. about Nier that was surprising, here comes that initial intro into the song, and I'm like, this is going to rock, and then we get to the acoustic guitar. Very surprising move. Very cool. So, Lee, regarding all the songs on this album, what are your thoughts, buddy, on performance? Yeah, I mean, echoing what Mark, I mean, we have had conversations about this album, like he said. I totally agree with, you know, I've said it to him as well, but about this being very consistent. I mean, it is. This, I think on, if you look back at the last four albums, there has been a skipper for me on each one of them. Um, no More Hell to Pay, I would say Saved by Love wasn't, I, I you know, I, could, I don't really care for that one. On Fallen, Big Screen Lies. On Goddamn Evil, Sea of Thieves, even The Devil Believes, Middle Finger Messiah. I wasn't too, in, in the end, you know, I wasn't too keen on those. So there isn't one song on this where I'd say I feel that way about any of them, you know. Um, but as Mark pointed out again there, yeah, I totally agree. There's no Yahweh. There's no Do Unto Others. There's no Revelation. Uh, there's no No More Hell to Pay either, you know songs that really gripped me and still do now um but saying that there's no real weakness either so it's it's a bit of a hard one um i do i think that they've they are you know musically absolutely fantastic i totally agree with the oz thing there it may be because of his health i there's a lot of times i can hear what i do miss on this album is where one of them's playing a solo, Michael or Oz, and the other one comes in with twi twin lead parts, actually within the solo, then it breaks off to the other one. Then, you know, I, I miss a bit of that. It happens a couple of times on here, not a lot. Oz's tremolo arm, trickery, you know, s surrender. Do you remember that really, that thing he does on the... Mm -hmm. I really wish there was just that. I wanted it's to hear that cool. once. You can yeah. hear it, right? I couldn't hear it on this album. I, I was waiting for that tremolo arm part. You know where he does that little trick? But that's just a little thing. You know, people would say he does it too much, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I think the fast songs on this album are really good. Um, but I still veer towards the medium pace stuff, like See No Evil, Hear No Evil. I love that track. I love um, The Way, The Truth, The Life as well. Um, and I think Nia, totally agree. Echoing uh, what Mark said, I totally agree on Nia is the best one since the one for me um but i do like it all i think michael's voice sounds brilliant I, I love his aggression in his voice and he does it at the right time i i don't know if any of you agree with me that when michael sang on that sun bomb record um it was too aggressive yeah it was almost like he someone it made me laugh someone said it sounds like he's shouting at a load of school kids to you know he's like a school teacher telling them off <laughs> it, almost, it almost like too much shouting i think on this album he does it perfectly you know he does some really good quiet stuff like on near on that first verse he just sounds his voice just sounds like you know i love that soft bit he does and you know the the variation in his voice i think is great um there was one really good solo. I mean, they're all really good solos, but when I listen to a solo, I want to, I, want to, I know how good Oz and Michael are and how technical they are and they can play anything and they can play fast. But the ones, I could, there was only one solo that's really grabbed me, like a really melodic one on this. And that's um, one of my least favourite songs, actually, which is Same Old Story. But the, the solo is absolutely, you know, so catchy. It's really well thought out. It almost feels like some of these solos on this are a bit jammy. You know what I mean? It almost feels like it's sort of jamming, like they haven't thought them through so much. But they're still very technical and, and great. Um, I can't give it an average, this album, because it's a lot better than that. Um, I've got to give a two-point something. I would say like a 2.6, 2.7 on this one. 2.7, there you go. 2.7. Lee Spencer from the UK. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
Kent, I know you want to keep this moving down the road, but if I could interject, there was one more a song that I failed to mention that I wanted to a stand out. I thought on this album was the way, the truth and the life. And they use that tool from the striper toolbox of taking scripture and uh, drawing a song directly from scripture, John uh, 14, six. And we've seen that before with marching into battle, a song off no more hell to pay. And uh, where I think they did it probably the best they've ever done. It was the song, the Valley. And uh, I remember seeing Striper live and I just happened to be standing right in front of Oz and I remember seeing him play that song and sing those harmonies into the microphone he had recently been through those well publicized health issues and just to see him up there praising God singing that song bravely singing those lyrics it became a worship experience for me and just to be perfectly clear not worshiping my idols in a band but worshiping God it was I can't even tell you how powerful it was just in that rock and roll club, that moment, that experience. But they, I was happy to see them continue that uh, tradition with the way, the truth, and the life. Great tune. You bet, buddy. You bet. Joe, we're up to you, buddy. All right. I uh, I want to say this album, it doesn't, it's not, it hasn't blown me away. And I think you guys have put it perfectly when you said there's not one song on there that really just blows you away. Uh, even The Devil Believes, when I first heard that, it, it really stood out more to me than this one. And, and the four guys are amazing. There's, I will never take away their, uh, uh, their musician musicians and songwriting and performing anything they're always going to do well production sounds good as we mentioned uh, i made some notes just about some of the songs transgressor is a really good opening and and then when you close it out with ashes to ashes it's, a, it's another perfect song to close it out with in their typical form uh, of uh, just how that their formula is as, as kevin kind of mentioned with their albums um the see no evil hear no evil i kind of already discussed i kind of that beginning is just it's kind of bland to me and some of these songs unfortunately i start to sing other songs from their albums because it sounds very similar at times yeah. i'm like wait which song is this sounds like another song that they've written from another album uh, i i can't give you an example at the moment um Joel, I'm not gonna, what was that do you think that's what happens when you have perhaps you have somebody say, who is doing the, the all the songwriting <laughs> well, I was going to say, well, you got one guy doing all the songwriting, maybe. Uh, it could be why. Uh, and Michael, I, I love him as a songwriter, but I mean, he's some of his stuff doesn't differentiate uh, from his solo material when it comes to Striper stuff. That's what a producer, but that's where a producer, if they had an outside yeah, producer, that, that, could be. that would be a great benefit. Not to take away from their sound, right. not to take your time, Joel, but yes, that's, I think when you have the, the producer is also the main songwriter, that's where you run into that sameness, I think. And the song that really stood out, I really love this song, but near um, that his vocals, listen to Michael's vocals, the way he, the tone that he sings it in reminds me of that late nineties way he would sing when he started getting the late nineties. And I love that song. It's one, it's definitely one of my favorite songs from the album, the harmonies that he does on it in the chorus. I love it. Michael, the way he can harmonize with himself and some of the background stuff. I'm a huge, I'm a huge Queen fan and Queen all time greatest in everything, but with background vocals and the way Freddie could harmonize and sing with himself, but also bring the other guys in. And Michael does a lot of that too. And I think it's great. Uh, there's a couple songs on the, on the album. I just, I really just don't care for it, to be honest with you out uh out uh was it uh out up, and, up and good uh yeah uh it's a okay song it's not really one that i really care for uh no rest for the wicked is another one that it just doesn't really do much for me my favorite song though on here is till death do us part i, I just think it, it's one a song i could listen to and over and over it doesn't get old it's very catchy um 
it definitely has grown on me the more I listen to it. I probably listen to it 20 times also. Uh, it, it just always, it's hard to go from being such a fan of, I could go back and listen to Soldiers and Ngawi Trust, never get old of any of that stuff. And then you got this kind of stuff and it's still good, but I miss that old song writing. I miss the way, and I know people are like, well, we got to progress as a band. Well, I grew to love you because of that, those songs, and that way you wrote the music. And I don't care if it was because that's how the eighties sounded. That's still good music. You know, what was your score on that, buddy? Your total score for the two point, two point, uh, all together or 2.5 for that. Yeah. Okay. Everything else has been a three. Gotcha. Paul, piping in from Canada on the performance. What's your score and some thoughts? Okay. Um, I'm going to try and be as quick as I can here. Um, Transgressor, absolute banger of a start to the album. I <laughs> just great. When I first heard it, I don't know, you guys, did any of you guys count how many seconds that initial scream was? I think it's uh, like close to 15 seconds. It was exactly 15 seconds. And that just like I can okay, I'm out of shape. I can't hold my breath for 15 seconds. <laughs> I'm not holding that. Uh, just crazy. Um, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, um, I gave that a perfect 10. Uh, I, I'm kind of going to go you give you give you my score out of 10, but then I'll break it down to a score out of three. Uh, see no evil, hear no evil. Started out not my. Started out as my least favorite track, but it has been growing on me. And once again, the production, the bass, the drums, like everything's just coming through on that. Um, I gave that an eight. Same old story. The first time I saw that, uh, the video, just fell in love with it. Love the, the, the melody of it, the harmonies. Um, it was just a great, the hook on that song. Like I, I just found myself singing along to it constantly. Uh, gave that a 9.5. Heart and soul. Love the opening riff. Um, drums, bass, once again, keep pounding. Very encouraging lyrics, but, uh, you know, never giving up in the face of life's challenges. Gave that a 9. Near. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this song actually, uh, I think, eclipsed Do Unto Others for me. Do Unto Others was a song I ranked as the number one striper song of all time. Um, to me, this song eclipsed it. It's kind of weird. I never, never would have expected to rank the ballad as the number one song of striper's career. Um and I, it's funny how we all have different opinions and I, you know, we got nine people in here right now. We had a couple others. There's everyone bounced around different, different uh, opinions on things. But to me, near just literally pierced my soul. Like the lyrics in that song, the feeling of that song, the, the emotion you could hear, you know, if, if it's true that Michael wrote it for Lisa I mean, you could hear it. You could just, you just felt it. And I love the fact that we're long past the CRP piano ballads of yesteryear with Honestly and All of Me. You know, great songs, but, you know, give me that nice, beautiful guitar ballad any day of the week. It's awesome. Uh, gave that a 10 plus, plus, plus. <laughs> uh, out, up, and in. Um, to me, it's kind of the equivalent of title track on this album. If, if there if there was a title track, I think this would be it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite song on the album, but from a message perspective, it definitely speaks to what the the title of the song, um, you know, in regards to the final battle. And uh, once again, excellent bass groove by Perry Roberts, Smash and Wave relentlessly. It was great. I gave that an eight. Rise to the call, first single. Um, once again, love the melody, love the love the lyrics in this song. Um, gave that a nine point five. Uh, the the way of the truth and life. Um, once again, powerful lyrics. It's basically just Jesus speaking directly to us. Uh, you know, taking the scripture like uh, Dirk said, it was it was very good. Um, and uh, gave that an eight. No rest for the wicked turned out to be my least favorite. Still a great song. I gave it a 
Um, Till Death Do Us Part. Another just beautiful song. Loved it. Um, can't stop singing along to it. And the lyrics, I just actually referenced the first couple of verses. When I was young, I never gave love a second chance. I never knew why it wouldn't last any longer than a second dance. Love is for life, not overnight like the world would have you believe. It takes a fight for the good of what's right before we will see. Love won't concede. I'm giving you my heart till death do us part. I'm giving you my soul. To have and to hold, never a lie, never deny the truth within our hearts. Carry the weight, got to communicate. And, you know, to, in this world that we're, you know, free love reigns, you know, and, and, and air, love is just a feeling. You know, I, I thought these lyrics really punch through and really speak to your soul and, uh, you know, the way we should be treating, um, you know, love as, in general. Uh, I was also thinking that if Michael could rearrange this song as a ballad, I could just hear near and this song at a wedding. <laughs> so, be interesting. I uh, gave that a 9.5. And then finally, Ashes to Ashes, uh, typical Striper barn burner track to close up the album. Thundering drums, pounding bass lines, thrashing guitar, and face melting screams. And I gave that a 9.5. Um, so the total I averaged out, that is 98.5 divided by 11, came up to 8.95. And when I just uh, divided that by 10 and multiplied by 3, I got 2.685. <laughs> so rounded up to 2.7. 2.7 from math. Canada, from Good Paul. Lord. All right. <laughs> Jeremy, all right, what you got buddy from your neck of the woods. It's so interesting hearing everyone's views now that I'm. I think I'm last. Uh, I agree with a lot of different people. I I think it's a good album overall. And again, what a lot of people said, I don't think there are any big standout cuts. Um, I I can't say anything bad against the songs. I like them. I think I agree with some people. I think there's something missing, and, and maybe that's Oz's influence in guitaring. It, I just feel like something's missing. Um, and again, the songs are really good. I have nothing bad to say, uh, and I agree with her. I think Near is one of the best songs on the record, and I don't like ballads. Uh, like with Kevin, I, I'm I, for me to say that's one of the best songs on the record, and I like heavy songs, that's not the best thing. <laughs> Um, I agree with Lee. I like more of the slower, mid-paced, crunchy, Sabbathy, like even the Devil Believes, which is my favorite current record. Um, my favorite heavy part in the whole record, the part I should say, part is uh, the breakdown in Transgressor, where you get that low end, heavy crunch with the lead guitaring. That's my favorite part of the whole record, but it's just that little part. Uh, that's the style that I like personally. Um, oh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, you don't get the dual leads, which we did on Even the Devil Believes, which again, I think that's it's just missing. It's missing Oz's fingerprint on it, even though we don't know 100%. Maybe Michael will watch this and correct us. I don't know. Um, but and another big uh, negative to me, and, and Joel brought it up, there are a lot of recycled riffs which brings this down for me. Like, uh, um, see, no, see No Evil, Hear No Evil is like The Valley Part 2 for me. Mm -hmm. And I think The Valley is a better song because it has the same exact riff. If you guys listen to it side by side, you can almost sing the same thing. That's probably the one I'm thinking of too. That's, it's The Valley, I and The Valley is a better song. So every time I listen, because that would have been my favorite track, but every time I hear it, all I hear is The Valley in my head, and... I'd rather go listen to the Valley. Um, so again, there are four or five riffs that are recycled. And as Kevin had mentioned, this is where a producer would come in and say, all right, guys, uh, you did that on this record and this song. Let's do something different or, or, you know, think of a better riff. I don't know. But um, that brings it down a little bit for me. So I'm just going to consolidate. I'm going to be real quick and just say roughly I would do overall, I would give it a 2.5. 
very good. Nothing great for me. I loved near. I mean that it's almost like you're singing in church when those the choir kicks in later in the song. Great song. I like a, I like all the songs. Just nothing really jumps out at me. Uh, that's just my take. <laughs> and so when Kevin was <laughs> he goes, I didn't like even double E's and I don't like Fallen. Those are my favorite current <laughs> current records. Uh, which again, everybody is different, which is awesome. <laughs> everybody likes a you little know, different he, thing. Yeah, um, I, 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 you're you're nailing it. I think one of the things to remember is this is when I wrote when I wrote my review for Heaven's Metal. I thought when I buy an Iron Maiden record, I want it to sound like Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. When I buy a Striper record, I want it to sound like Striper. It this sounds like Striper. Um, I had a conversation, well, a text message with one of the guys from the Brave, and I said, "Hey, you know, this song sounds like this." And he, he said, he kind of laughed. He said, "Well, you know, there are only what nine notes yeah. in the scale." So I was like, oh, "That's true." Sorry, Jeremy, didn't mean to take your thunder. No problem. Me. And I, you know, and I, and we all know Oz's health, and also when Michael wrote this, his health. Uh, I mean, if I think I remember reading right, like his, he had to face literally face down for his eye surgery writing this record. Which, if this is Michael at you know seventy yeah. percent, it's still amazing. You know, it's like I, I, I don't want to come across as negative. It's not bad. So again, that's not that's not a bad thing. It's above average. I like all the songs; they're good. But again, there are not a lot of standout cuts for me. Uh, as of right now, that may change. And when you listen to a record, as we all have, you're like, oh, I didn't really like that at first, but now I really like it. So maybe that'll happen. I don't know. Can I that's make a right. point? Can I make a point real quick? I wonder no, if no, Mike... Joe. All right, have a good night, guys. <laughs> See ya, bye-bye. Good night, Lee. Bye. Um, <laughs> I think, do you guys think make, maybe Michael is stretching himself too thin and is writing too much with too many bands? And is not giving himself the opportunity to be to stay fresh. Well, I, I think that's where the recycled riffs come in. So it's like you, like you're saying, you can only think of so many different riffs. And it is, I mean, he if you're going to steal, you steal from yourself, which is what he did, which is fine, better than stealing from you know another band, obviously. But but he's playing with some, and he's and it's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy it. It's like I said, Sunbomb, uh, is George Lynch. Uh, the other project he was just involved in, we just mentioned his solo material, striper material. Maybe I mean, he's a talent. I mean, he, he's unbelievable. I mean, can you name any other songwriter in metal that is more prolific than Michael Sweet? I mean, there's nobody. He's literally the hardest working guy in the business right now, in my opinion. Like, I mean, besides Del Thompson, <laughs> he's on everyone's <laughs> project at this point. Well, he he said he he's he wrote a song a day for this album. So think about it's that. Crazy. I mean, that it, well, you know, back to your point though, Joel. I mean, that's not very much time to write a song. Yeah, that's what he's done in the last like several mm. albums. He yeah, he, he he's made a very point. He's got ADHD and mm -hmm. and OCD, and he just says that for him, for someone to say, oh, you've got six months to write an album he'd be like oh forget about it you tell him that he has two weeks to write an album and that's just where he's in his and that's just where he's in his spot his groove he just writes one song a day and i don't know what you got like you know we all have different opinions of what our favorite songs or favorite albums are and when i just scored this album it's like because i i decided to score each song because i i didn't know for sure which one was gonna eclipse which and i'm pretty sure my score on even the devil blues was 8.9 and this one was 8.95 and i was like holy crap how'd that happen <laughs> like so, yeah i think i think, I think there are more like, there was no bad song on this album like right all the songs are good where and other records you might say i have five standout tracks that are amazing and the other ones you know they're okay where this one they're more all good without a big standout for me again i'm speaking for myself mm -hmm. but i think that's kind of what you're saying like that's why your average would be higher because overall the record i think has better songs but they're just not as standoutish to me i think you made a good point it was sorry it was who said that um he might be stretching himself too thin it was that me me 
I think I think you if you are doing this much, it will happen. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys are Alter Bridge fans, but Miles Kennedy and mm. you know that that band stretched yeah. themselves, and and I think they've been affected. Maybe not on the last album, but they you know they've gone off the boil a little bit. I think you, you will. In, it will happen if you stretch yourself too thin, without a doubt. I don't know what you, I don't know what you guys think. But I was thinking about this as we was going along. When before even the Devil Believes came out, and hearing Michael do all his interviews, he really made a point of that on even the Devil Believes, and I think he really believed that it was the best album. I don't think he really believes that on this one. I've, I think I've heard him say it once or twice. It, it was almost like every time you hear him speak, he would say, "This is definitely the best one." I'm not sure if he actually thinks this one is the best one. I feel better about my comments now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, well, and again, you know, you had the health of the band, him and my, him and Oz, you know, their health wasn't 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, but again, if this is Michael. That health level, like... <laughs> still to do this a record at 80%, let's say you're 80% health, it's still amazing. He's still a, a phenomenal talent. So, Again, if Michael ever watches this, you know, I'm a, I, it's my, you know, Striper's my favorite band. It's like, there's nothing against it. Yeah. It's just and guys, because, because the bar don't. kept getting set so high, you got to, yeah. sometimes you're not going to hit that. And again, every, no. fan, is, every yeah. fan is different. No, you're right. We put them on this. We, we expect so much, don't we? That anything that veers off of excellence, we're like, you know. It's just weird. Do you guys notice uh, the one thing that I've really noticed over these last five albums is the lyrical content. Um, I've just found like, you know, you go back to the first five albums and the lyrics were very simple. Jesus makes me want to sing, you know, whatever. And now I'm finding that lyrics are just getting so deep and more mature and, and more, very mature and very scriptural. Like, you know, this is their mission to spread the gospel. And I think they're doing it better than ever. Like, and yet at the same token, they're they're doing it with uh, just incredible musicianship that you could have a guy, well, let's take Lee. Lee may not care so much about the, the lyrics, but just the music is just so good that it, 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 it can just speak to everybody. I, I love it. Rex, I'm curious, partner, what is your assessment on the performance? Well, this is a category where I think there's not really truly been enough time to like totally soak it in. And kind of like we talked about in our prior conversation, just listening to music in general and, and how we do that. But I will say the album keeps growing on me. Um, and I will agree with <clears throat> the majority of the comments that there's most of those songs are good. There's not a great killer track that you can just go, oh, yeah. Um, let's see, I just lost my thought here. Um, I will make a comment about Near, um, and I don't know if anyone has it or not. If you like the version that's on the regular album, they did an alternate mix for the Japanese version of this album that I feel is even better than the one on the regular studio album. They took out the keyboards and I would call it the production of everything is like subtle, like they lowered everything. Um, I really, I really enjoy that version. Um, I'll just go real quick. My top four songs are number one is Heart and Soul. Number two is Near. Number three is Same Old Story. And number four is See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Um, and I think this album will probably keep growing on me. Um, right now, I'm going to place it at two and a half stars. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> guys, my thoughts 
on the uh, performance. I just have a few quick notes. Mark, and what kind of everybody else is saying too, um, kind of what I'm picking up and the way I'm describing it, there's no, with the exception of perhaps near, there's no real, real radio singles. If we were going to pick out a radio single, as we think of radio singles, there's not really a radio single. But what we do have is a very strong, total, and complete album. It's an album listening experience. You know, from back in the day when they didn't, you didn't necessarily buy an album for a single, you bought an album for a band and for the total package. And that's kind of what I'm getting from this. Um, Joel, I think you made mention of this right before we got to this point and a couple others did. I'm seeing a more mature striper and there, there was still to me a little bit of posturing, nothing wrong with this. I remember Perry, uh, whenever I think he did the interview with Rex and myself back in the day of Striper Drive, Perry was talking about, I think the, the, the GDE album and we were talking about the title track and he said, you know, sometimes it's good to get people's attention and to get them to think about what's being said. Um, and I, I understand and agree with that, but there's also a little bit of metal posturing when you have Middle Finger Messiah. You know, when you have GDE and certain songs, there's a little bit of this posturing. To me, this album, there's really none of that posturing, you know, that you got to kind of be on the edge lyrically. Uh, and some of you guys have made mention about more of the straightforward biblical lyrics. It's a more mature album in total for me. Um, guys, my underlining assessment is this album is what I call striker solid, which is a very good thing. By the same token, it's more of the same. And so that's what we have. We have a striker solid album, nothing to be ashamed of. Surprisingly, guys, I didn't really go into this album with high expectations. And I probably anticipated this album the least of any other Striper album. Um, I still love Striper. I'm not down on Striper. I'm just busy. I'm busy in life. <laughs> but I got this album. I popped it in. And guess what? I was like, wow. I'm really enjoying the total package of this. Uh, surprisingly, hmm. I'm going to give it a 2.5. Nothing extremely outstanding, but by the same token, absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Uh, very striker solid. And guys, I want to say this too in closing on my behalf, and then we'll get to scripture closeout after you guys have some closing thoughts. At the end of the day, guys, I have to go back to 1992 through 2002 when there virtually was no striker. I also have to remember the years of 2005 to 2009 when Striker to me sounded a bit foreign. I'm very proud of Striker from, you know, no more hell to pay. And actually from Second Coming and onward, I'm very proud of Striper. I'm very proud of this album for them, The Final Battle. Uh, I do think that uh, things could be freshened up a bit, as we mentioned uh, with maybe doing a few different twists and turns in the delivery and who's singing what and some guitar solos, et cetera. But at the end of the day, a very good album. So guys, without taking too much time, we're going to have scripture close out. We've been, been here for a little bit. Um, thank you everybody for your patience and thank you all of our friends um, and sorry for the technical difficulties. But guys, before we get to scripture closeout, any last final thoughts uh, briefly that anybody would like to share? I just think how we consume music now is different. At 55, 54 years old, the way I listen to things now is not how I did when I was 15. Um, and I think sometimes how the industry is now, you know, um, we used to get a record every 12 to 14 months essentially and you only heard it on the radio so you'd hear that song once and you couldn't wait to hear it again but now we can hear it whenever we want and we're able to dissect it and pull it apart so 
I'm very grateful um, myself. I really like this record. I think this is a really strong album. I totally agree with you there about the way we listen to music. I mean, I only listen now because of the channel. I only listen to music from this year. Um, so I've got 75 albums at the moment on rotation for this year. Yeah. Just trying to, and I'm, I'm only trying to get my top 20 albums together, you know, and not, I'll probably listen to the Striper album four times only because if I listened to that 20 times, I wouldn't give other bands a chance. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I don't give any, any band a, the best chance really now because hey, of the way. It, Lee, uh, can I ask you a question, Lee? And I'm sure it's out there. You may have already put this out there. What is your, what is your top album for the year so far? Uh, rock, <laughs> rock album or metal? Probably the Queen's Rock album. The, the new one that just came You're out. Good. I thought yeah. you were going to say that, Lee. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it, Lee? I like it. Yeah, it's it's um, I mean, Stripe Rank, they're going to be easily be in my top albums, but um, I think the Queen's Rock one really, I think they've just hit the you know with Todd, it's been getting better and better, and I think they've just they've just done it now that they've almost. I'm not saying it's as good. I mean, I still enjoy Rage Fraud or an Operation Mind Crime and The Warning probably better. But that that might be nostalgia as well. No, I think it's probably Queen's Rock at the moment. But there's there's a load of good. The news this year has just been mad. It's I was so, I was so looking forward to uh, seeing Queen's Rock. I went to the uh, Judas Priest and Queen's Rock show back in April, and unfortunately, I was so disappointed because like the typical concert they made the sound of the opening band not like, as good not as good mm -hmm. and i couldn't like we were in a hockey arena mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i just couldn't hear any of the the lyrics like any vocal mm -hmm. like todd todd's the star of the show in my opinion and i couldn't even hear it. i was so disappointed because i was so looking forward to hearing them mm -hmm. i'm definitely i haven't even looked at listened to the new album yet so i'm gonna have to uh do that now that uh we got that rave uh, i mean that's a that's a that album is a it's a real you take your time with that album you know yeah that is, that is one that i have listened to a few times just to loads of layers to to you know peel back and it's absolutely brilliant one of the near enough perfect album i would say well it sounded great last night lee i saw queen's mm. like priest last night and they played mm. uh, i believe behind the walls was from the new album oh yeah. yeah yeah it was so, so yeah. i will say just uh, for my closing for me i think of a 12 year old kid that came home in 1985 with that ep of the yellow and black attack it was recommended by a regular guy in a radio regular radio store not because it was a christian album but in spite of the fact that it was a Christian album. He said, no, these guys are really good. I remember the first moment I heard the first scream. I remember hearing the guitars, the vocals I could understand, that thump and bass solo, the drums. I mean, they've been my favorite band ever since. And I never in my wildest dreams would have thought at 49 years old, I would open up a new Striper album, hear a long scream at the beginning of the album. So for me, I mean, every album is a gift. Every show is a gift. Uh, I've never suffer, suffered from clinical depression or anything like that, but there's times you get down. And I can't even tell you how many times I've been driving down the road and I just, I throw in that CD and it lifts my spirit, Striper's music. Mm -hmm. So I just feel just so in, indebted to them, the way that God has used them and their music and their ministry. And I'm thankful. One, one day we'll have the last album. One day it will be the last time I see him live. And sadly, I have a feeling I won't realize it at the time that it's going to be my last time seeing them. But until then, every album and every show is a gift. So uh, mm -hmm. Michael, Robert, Oz, Perry, if, if you end up listening to this, thank you. And that goes for Dave, Lisa, and everybody else as well.
Thank you, Dirk. Thank you, everybody. And um, perfect segue. Friends, we're headed to scripture close out here. And Dirk, you, you were actually the one who really pinpointed uh, the song, The Way, The Truth, The Life. And that's where scripture close out comes from today. Um, it's John 14, 1 through 6. And this is Jesus, Yeshua, talking. And guys, check out the chorus to The Way, The Truth, The Life. Read it. And then check out John uh, 14, 1 through 6, and Michael is practically quoting scripture here. And Yeshua, Jesus, he says, don't let yourselves be disturbed or don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. And then Jesus said, in my father's house are many places to live. If there weren't, I would have told you because I am going there to prepare a place for you. Since I'm going and preparing a place for you, Jesus said, I will return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be also. Furthermore, you know where I'm going and you know the way there. And then Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in verse 7, he says, Because you have known me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him. In fact, said Jesus, you have seen him. And guys, that blows me away because Jesus is looking at Thomas. And when you think about what he's saying, from now on, you do know the Father. In fact, as he's looking right at Thomas, you have seen God. Thomas is looking at Jesus right in the eyes. And Jesus is looking at Thomas, God in the flesh. And he says, Thomas, you've seen me. You've seen God. And that always touches my heart. I get a little, <laughs> you know, Jesus grips my heart. Uh, I can't love him enough. Because, uh, you know, let me just say he's a God of many chances. So may, may we just remember, like Striper says, a reason for the season. Let's get back to what it's all about. Shout it out. Christ is the reason. We're headed that way, aren't we, guys? It's Thanksgiving. I give thanks. And we're headed toward that season. I give thanks for you guys, each and every one of you, Mark, Lee, Paul. I don't get to see you guys much anymore because you're busy and I'm busy. Love you guys. And Dirk, it's been so great. We got to meet actually through Lee's channel. And this has been a blessing. And I um, want to thank all of our brothers here. Friends, thank you so much for watching. The Lord loves you. And uh, <laughs> sorry, I get kind of weepy sometimes, but he's a great God. He is so awesome. He's the true and living God. And uh, friends, I love you. Love you out there. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And we're going to sign off. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you all. Hey friends, one thing we want to do here is make sure that you know how to connect the best way. We have some wonderful vodcast and podcast hosts here. So Kevin, we're going to start with you and we're going to go around the horn to those that do have a vodcast or podcast. Talk about really quick the uh, links where people can connect with you. Um, Heaven's Metal Streaming Radio. We do have a YouTube channel. Um, I do, I've done all kinds of top tens for different bands classic albums all in a you know christian hard rock and metal context but there's also heaven's metal streaming radio which is a live 24 hour a day seven days a week radio online radio station it's available in the usa canada and in england through live 365 there there's you can either go online or download their app. It's in the Apple Store and the, the Android shop. Or if you have a Roku, you can download the Get Me Radio app. 
you know, w we play everything. So, um, and there's all, but it's Live 365 or Get Me Radio or My Tuner or all the ways that you can listen. Okay. And then Lee? Oh, see it. Look. See it. Look. Iridium. <laughs> Iridium Rock and Metal Reviews, YouTube. Um, you know I've done over 1,200 videos now in two years. I mean, that's hard work, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, just all reaction videos. It's, it's, there's some Christian uh, metal and rock on there. Uh, loads of secular music as well. All rock and metal. Uh, there's, we have chats like this, uh, vodcasts, if you like, reactions, album reviews, all rock and metal. There's no pop. There's no rap. So you ain't got to worry about that. All right. There you oh, go. man. <laughs> Why not? Awesome. Exactly. Joel. I am Joel Walker from the Imaginary Music Podcast, where you can catch those episodes each Monday and sometimes with bonus episodes. I'm on Spotify. I'm on iTunes. Just to give you an example, what I do is I talk to a lot of Christian metal rock artists from the 80s and 90s or those associated with it. Janice Sweet, she's been a guest. Robert Sweet's been a guest. Tim Gaines has been a guest also on the episode. Um, it started early, last December with Luke Easter from Tourniquet, uh, formerly of Tourniquet, I should say, uh, as my first guest. And I've had Tim Gaines, Jimmy Brown, Scott Wenzel, very interesting from White Cross episode you need to check out if you never have. Rex Carroll's been on. Uh, I've had most of the Holy Soldier guys on. Uh, just really good conversations open conversations as kevin mentioned earlier if, if anybody heard uh it, it's just like two friends talking to each other and just uh, having comfortable conversations and jeremy hey guys my name is jeremy brown i do uh well i have a youtube show called torrential riff uh so just go into youtube type that in i'll pop up uh, i have over 300 uh reviews um, I also just started doing interviews, so I have five uh, video vodcasts, I call it, the style. I highly recommend you watch it and not just listen to it. Um, so it's a more of a visual and audio experience, so I try to do something a little bit different. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm doing that, oof, coming up on three years now, I think. it's That's crazy. It blows my mind. Uh, and it, it's, again, you, the more you do, it's like, you're like, I've done that much, that many? Just like Lee's like, I've done that many episodes. It just goes by so fast because we don't stop when you're, when you're a creator, you're always on to the next thing. And um, it's cool. I do, I do watch Lee's uh, radio sh uh, metal show and I do listen to uh, Joel work Walker and for the iPod stuff. So that's, it's pretty good, pretty good shows. And of course, area three, one, two, I'm going to shout out to those guys. I only started doing videos because of uh, interviews because of those guys. And uh, they gave me like, Hey, I could do that too. I can give that a try. So uh, Rex and Kent and Mike, I think you're great hosts and uh, really good, great guys. And it's good to uh, be with other uh, brothers in metal, whether you believe or don't, uh, which is, again, we're, we're, we're all friends here. So um, check out my show if you can, if you get time, I'm good to go. <laughs> and friends, we'll have all the links to all those channels uh, in the description below. Thank you so much, and God bless. And Against the Law is still Striper's best album. Take care, everybody. Amen. <laughs>